former Chicago police superintendent Eddie Johnson joining us live this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you know, these two Newark officers being shot and then the 14 people who were shot in Chicago on Monday, including small children. Compare the violence we're seeing today to what you saw when you were on the force. So I think it's, it's, it's more rampant now, more blatant. So I, I think that we as a society and our legislators need to get uh, serious about, you know, clamping down on the crime now. Let's talk a little bit more about the Chicago shooting. Uh, 14 people, they gathered for a vigil. Let's listen to one of the victims. We just started hearing gunshots. It was just, you know, a bunch of women and kids. And you want to ask why, but it's like, that's not even good enough to even ask why. So people are scared, they're fed up. Um, what more needs to happen to prevent gun violence? So, I, I, Adrian, I think we need to do a few things. Uh, first of all, universal background checks would do, go a long way, I think, to ensuring that people that shouldn't have weapons won't have them. But at the same time, we, as a society, we need to ensure that victims and witnesses of crimes feel safe enough to come forward and give us the information we need to hold some of these people accountable for what they do. Because at the end of the day, the issue is criminals that commit these crimes need to know there's a certainty to prosecution and to sentencing when they commit these crimes. You know, the, the being soft on them is not going to get us where we want to be. Right. And police departments all over the U.S., they're dealing with major staffing shortages on top of the rising crime. But are you hearing, is it getting any better? Has there been more recruitment? And is that recruitment working to keep officers on the force? Well, I, you know, here in Chicago, we're definitely seeing a, an issue with trying to uh, staff uh, the department. And, and, and one of the reasons is because, you know, the anti-sentiment uh, against police officers across the country definitely isn't helping. But we, we also have to ensure that we support these officers, you know, give them mental wellness treatment, you know, when they need it. And just let them know that the government supports them in what they do when they make a mistake. And we hold them accountable, of course, but we getting more, get them more coaching and training, and ensure, you know, that that we support them. But when they make when they make an egregious mistake or egregious crime, then they're held accountable for it. What are you hearing from your community about how important policing and crime are to them, especially as they're preparing to vote in this year's midterms? Yeah, well, listen, at the end of the day, everybody wants to feel safe where they live and where they work. So, you know, I think candidates that 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 back or have a perception of backing like the defund police efforts are going to have a problem. People want to feel safe in this country. So I think that when they go to vote, they're going to vote for platforms where they they know the legislators are supporting the police. Eddie Johnson, thank you so much for being with us as always and offering your perspective. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.